So where have you moved on to? Because I know even though you're here talking to me about the crime writer in the real world of publishing, you've got to be deep yeah. into some other work. It's a, I'm working on another standalone. You are? Yeah. Great. Well, to just review the books, The Tower, 1999, you've done all this actually in eight years. You've got an impressive list of publications. Well. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been hard at work, but you have been. So we have minutes to burn, do no harm. Then the four: Tim Rackley, Kill Clause, the program, troubleshooter, and last shot. Now the crime writer, which is taking you to the advanced age of what thirty? Uh, my age? Well, you don't have to. Uh, I'm thirty. I'm thirty-four. But Sunday. you started this, you said, when you were nineteen. So I mean, you've yeah. really, you know, you're still awfully young in terms of writers. There are plenty of writers out there in their seventies and eighties cranking along. I, I knew what I wanted to do from a really early age, and I had a lot of luck, and I had a lot of help from people that you need help. Like you cannot do it alone by any stretch of the imagination. And I had people picked up and really responded to early early drafts and you know got me to the next step and got me agents and got me lawyers and you know I had a lot of help and a lot you of You went life. to school back east, right? You yes. are are you from LA? No, I'm from the Bay Area. Oh, you're from San Francisco. Yeah. Okay, but then you went well, you were Harvard, right? I was Harvard undergrad, yeah. And did that shape anything that you No, did? that I mean almost to the contract sort of picked the one field that it it really, it doesn't matter where you went to school. I mean, as you know, so many fabulous writers, I mean, you could be a high school dropout and write better than, you know, the entire graduating class at Yale. It just makes no difference, and people don't really care. So so the, the first contacts that I got actually were from an internship that I did in Hollywood, because I've, I've also been doing screenwriting from a right. pretty early, early age, and I met someone who had done, you know, who'd produced a movie by a prominent writer director and they got me to his lawyer and this lawyer read an early draft of this and and loved it and of the tower my first and, and got me to an agent and then I really was like learning how to write a book when I was writing that book it's such a curve that that literally the ends of each chapter were better than the beginnings because I was learning how to write through the whole thing you're not one of those people that has like three manuscripts in a drawer that will never see the light of no, day the tower I, was it no, right? the tower was the first one and but I'll tell you if you saw, read the first draft of the tower uh, that should have been one of the three that's in a drawer. I mean, I completely revamped it. You know, I, I, I got to the end of it and I made it up as I went along. I got to the end and boy, did it show. So then I had to take the whole thing apart. I figured out structure. I mean, I was really learning how to write a novel by writing a novel. Sure. And so, you know, in some ways, I think I had the I had the determination to write, you know, 12 drafts of one novel instead of 12 drafts of 12 novels, which I don't think I would have got anywhere. So it was really in the, the, the grind time between the tower minutes to burn my second that I was really learning how to write a novel. By the time I started Do No Harm, that was probably the first book that I started that I knew actually how to write a novel without just trial and erroring my way through. You know, the rough draft of the tower, you know, was close to the final thing, even though I, you know, I still do draft after draft, but it was the first time that I had a game plan and knew what I was doing and knew how to go about it. Are you a relentless self-editor? Yes. The editors help you particularly. I mean, in any of uh, any of the novels you've published, has it been mostly you, or has there been some interaction? Oh, I've had some interaction. What I find, it, it, what's interesting is I'll write. You know, I do a lot of self-editing before I show it to anybody, but then a lot of times I'll get a manuscript to a point where it'll kind of plateau, and I need a really. One thing that's helpful is if you get a smart and trusted reader to come in and just kind of jar loose, even if they're not giving you solutions or tell, it's almost like just when you open it up, it jars it loose and somebody can come in and not like three things and I'm already off and it kind of just breaks up that plateau and lets you then rewrite and construct it to a higher place than you would have strictly on your own. I think that's a really good point. As an editor, I find, and I've frequently said and said today in a long editorial letter, you know, I consider myself to be a good reader. If this isn't working for me, you should pay attention to that. We're absolutely. To the author. And words, your job you know. is sort of to go in there to the plateau that they've reached on right. their own with a jackhammer and just break up all the ground. You know, then you can go away, you know, and the job is then to reconstruct it, and that's what gets you past that plateau, sometimes is other opinions. The plateau image is interesting. I find sometimes that authors really don't know what story they're writing until, until you know, it all sort of gets down there. Many times the book they think they're writing is not really the story that they're, I mean. Well, right. And so sometimes your job as an editor is to, is to get them to see what it is they're actually right. writing as opposed to the right. way it looks. Mostly it's taking stuff out, which I find fascinating. That's yes. why I asked you about the self-editing, because most, mostly once you get the story down, it's peering away. I've gotten increasingly ruthless. I, I thought my... that the crime writer is, is a very taut book. 
Yeah, you know. well, it's it's my leanest book, and yeah. in some ways, if you, it is it's almost I think it's two thirds the length of the Kill Clause. It is because um, um, I kind of looked at the paging and I thought, you know, spare less is more. Right. And, but it takes a lot of skill and practice to learn that to trust your reader. Well, it's you the know. great line that I, I forget who said it. I want to say it was Abraham Lincoln, and since we're on the air, I'm likely wrong. But somebody had the great line of saying, "Sorry, I wrote you a long letter. I didn't have time to write you a short one." Right. Well, that's that? like the Elmore Leonard line that says, "I leave out the words that readers yeah. skip," which is, you know, right, right, essentially right. the same do, thing. I don't. But it takes so much time to get a book that lean, and in some ways, I look back at the earlier stuff that, that's a little bit longer, and I go, "I just didn't have the skill." to get the character development and all the plotting into a shorter format. I didn't have the ruthlessness to cut everything right. that I should have. And I probably didn't have the skill to get it down that short, which doesn't mean like shorter is better. Obviously I could publish a, you know, a 30 page short story doesn't mean that it's better. Right. But it, it, a lot of it is about cutting and looking in and going, if one joke's good here, it doesn't mean that three is 300% better. It just doesn't. That's really true. Or buzzwords, you know, if you use Rastafarian once, that's the only yeah, time you should done. use it in yeah. the manuscript. Postprandial, one use. Yep. You know? I recently have said, you know, I want you to do a global search on your book. Oh, and, no, you know, every are, time yeah. you see this word after, well, we could go on forever about writing things, but I think our time is up. Um, I meant to ask you, short stories, have you written any? Yes. I've written um, three that are published and a few more that are maybe to be published. Cool. Yeah. So you're exploring all forms then. Yeah, you know, I've gotten into comic books lately and you know, I wrote my first T V pilot and Wow. Yeah, so I've been playing in different mediums, which has been a lot of fun. Well, one of the things I've always enjoyed the most about you is just how much you love what you do. You know, you, you <laughs> never whine about it, you never say, God, you know, yeah. this is whatever. You really love what you're doing. Yeah, I do. I, I feel like I won the lottery every day, you know. Even even when it's hard, you know. Even when it's hard. It's it's there's nothing I'd rather be doing. And it's not, you know, there's a lot of things that are difficult about it, but any time that, you know, I'm going to stop and consider that or complain about it, you look at a variety of other jobs which are, you know, a lot tougher where people don't even feel they have the luxury to complain about them because it's work, you know? And it's, th there's so much about writing that I love. Well, we've had good years together and I expect another eight years from yeah, now we can yeah. have this discussion again and I will be totally awed by what you've done. Thank you so much for coming to talk to Thanks us about it. Thanks for having it. me on. And I thank all of you for joining us on this episode.